Good morning. This is Dr. Bill White, and I'm going to talk to you some this morning about a man who had some a severe TMJ problem, and he had to take so much medication he could hardly stay in it on his job, you know. So it was difficult. He was hurting quite bad, and we corrected this problem with orthodontics only. I didn't even put him in a splint or anything to bring his jaw up to the position that I felt like was necessary. I could see how it was locked back and I just opened it up and freed it up and his uh, TMD pain just went away. And uh, I watched him for several years, and if you stay with this, I'll show him to you. Years after we got through it, he never had this pain again as long as he kept his bite from deepening, and he wore a retainer religiously for years. And uh, I've seen him uh, just a few years back, and I could probably find him today. Uh, so anyway, watch this. It's a... Uh, interesting video and you will learn something about the temporal mandibular uh, joint what you can do uh, in cases like this uh, anyway here is the gentleman and this was in 1982 uh, when he came in with uh, this severe pain and he was having to take so much medication he could hardly uh, keep it <laughs> A job, you know, it was, it was really uh, pretty bad. And so, let me show you his teeth. Uh, he had a terrific deep bite. In other words, his mandible was locked back. And that pushes the condyle back and interferes with the tissue back where the synovial fluid is formed, where this real vascular tissue with a lot of nerves and, and, and arteries and lymph and everything back in that area. And I've never, in my whole uh, experience with orthodontics for about 60 years, I've never found a guy or a person, I say, with temporal mandibular joint problems that had a terrific forward slide. In other words, he'd go to bite to and he'd get up there close as Jesus and he'd slide his jaw forward. And I never have been able to find a person that hadn't been messed with that had this forward slide like that that had TMJ problems. Now, I know that you get arthritis, you get trauma, and you have uh, stress and all these other things on uh, people, but uh, and people with a forward slide can have TMJ problems. I'm not saying that, but I never did find one myself. Uh, so uh, here is he bit down. I'm sure his jaw wanted to be further forward. You can look at it and, and the wear he got on the back side of his upper front teeth. Now this is the on the back side, I think I've got a picture here that will show you uh, how his teeth were worn down by the lower teeth rubbing up against that. Uh, let me get to this some more. But anyway, you can see he's got a, quite a deep bite there, and this is locking his jaw back, and his jaw is back so far that it's irritating uh, this area where the synovial fluid forms. That's my opinion now. I don't know what else would do it, but we brought it forward and he quit having the pain and he hasn't had any since then, as long as he stays. Uh, and wears this retainer and keeps this bite from deepening again. Uh, now on the right side of his mouth, he is uh, kind of a class two in the anterior part. But it's class one back here in the molar in the first bicuspid. And the second by, I mean, the, this is just the second by. The first by is crowded out inside, and then all of this is crowded underneath here. 
uh, and we're going to end up putting that cuspid back in there when we open the space up. And you'll think you don't have room enough for this this tooth, but you actually uh, do have room for it. Now on the left side of the jaw, uh, he's in a a good class one relation. All that he needs, all all this. This is ideal. Uh, but when you get on the right side, he's got some problems, and this caused the uh, the difficulty with the bite deep. Me, you see, like this, and trapping the jaw back, and he wants to bring his jaw forward. So we'll have a little class three uh, correction. And when we bring the jaw out like this, we're going to have to uh, do do some class three correction over on this side that's class one. The class two side will be uh, fine when you get through. So that's something you might want to uh, notice. We haven't seen many cases like that in here. All right. Looking at the upper teeth, you see the jaw is pretty small. Now look how these teeth are worn out in here. You got a place where the lower teeth seat back here, but they rubbed the back of this so much, and he rubbed it and wore the back part of these upper teeth uh, really down quite a bit. Uh, and you can study these models a lot of times. And it'll tell you so much about the case. And uh, in talking to the person, just let them tell you what's wrong. They will actually tell you after a while. And he's having a lot of difficulty with it. Now his lower edge of teeth over here look great, you know. But as we come around the corner, this tooth is completely crowded out. This uh, first bicuspid. This is in pretty good class 1 case, but this forms a class 3 problem, I mean a class 2 problem right in this area right in here. And we've got to open this gentleman's bite, and so we actually build a retainer and, uh, and open it up in here and let this, these teeth come back together again. Now I'm going to show it to you. Uh, in just a second, and it's a few years into the treatment, but we just did regular orthodontics, and we got him finished out, and he, as soon as we got his bite open, we didn't have any more temporal mandibular joint pain. He brought his jaw forward on his own. Now you can see these lower head two teeth. This is shot from the back side of the model, of course, and, uh, he wore the upper front teeth, uh, just the back sides of them, uh, down quite a bit in, in doing this. And it's got it over to the side, too. There's uh, several other things in this case. Now, here we are. This was, this was in 1982 when these were taken. And I didn't shoot anything much on him for a good while. So we had the bite completely open. We had him out of pay and everything. And I saw, well, this is an interesting case. So I started taking pictures on this fellow. And, and I've got pictures on him all up into 2007. And I've actually seen him back in, I think it's 2000. Uh, 10, 12, and 14, and in there, uh, so, we, and he's probably still around, I've just had, a lot of retired from the office, and, uh, uh, you know, after he'd been there a good bit, so I've, uh, retired and haven't seen him for a long time, but he's, I'm sure if he had the problem, the people there at the office know him, he's been coming in for years, and everything. All right, now you look at it, and he's got in the, the midlines lined up. These teeth are in place in pretty good shape. The bicuspid we had problem bringing it in. I'm going to run through the uh, the work here, and if you are interested in that, just seeing the orthodontics, you can study it uh, more carefully. We had a hard time getting this bicuspid.
into that space. So I put a, a large arch wire on there and pull that thing right through that gap. Uh, now we'll go through this pretty quick. The uppers lined up good. And the our customer was having trouble getting it through there. We got into open space by squeezing them out of cuspid, but uh, that's not the way to do it. We have a spring on here, and it's opening it up, and they're leading it into it, so it is straightened up, and this will pop right into that uh, spot right there. Uh, here's the big daddy bit of wire right there. We use that thing for everything. I think I can do nearly anything with this outside wire that you can do with all the stuff you stuck inside other than the uh, pallet of separator. So I, I hardly use any uh, other gadgets inside that span. I can do this nearly all of it with this the single wire. And it, the cost is almost nothing compared to other things. Uh, whether you want to learn to do that or not, that is left up to you. Okay, I'm going to run through this pretty quick. Now, we've got a lot of pictures on him. And he's wearing this bite opening device now to keep his bite from deepening. And by doing that, we've stopped the wear on the back of these teeth. And they're looking much better in there. So let me go into we got a whole bunch. So here is this uh, my cuspid. Now we we put a lot of force on that to come through, and we pushed it through by pulling out on these this whole side. See this this uh, large wire uh, would be if you tied it over here, it would be sticking out. Uh, half inch maybe over this side and we pushed it down and tied it here and it brought this tooth right through that gap and these are the teeth that forced it through over there and when we got it through we just took this arch wall uh, these uh, wires don't cost the hardly anything maybe uh, back when I was doing them about 50 cents would be uh, the amount you take. All right, here's 1983, and we're virtually finished with the orthodontics, and he hadn't had any more temple mandibular joint problem at all after we got his jaw uh, opened out correctly in there. Now, this side, class one side, we had to advance it, so we wore some class 3 elastics in here to pull this up, you know, to meet with that. Uh, and he's not had any pain over the years. Uh, so this is 1983 when we pretty well finished him. And the teeth are lined up and I'm going to show you the, the case. Uh, I'll show you the thing and we'll look back at the other teeth when we do that. Now, he wears that retainer with a bite plate on it. He doesn't want this to get deep. If he takes this out, it'll tend, tend to deepen again. In fact, he wears the retainer too much. In other words, you need to take it out and massage that tissue quite a bit and really uh, do that several times during the day, but just keep it in there. And I recommend him uh, sleeping in this thing as bad as the pain was that he had and uh, this is a case that's got a real uh, something to learn in here uh, to do that now if you're doing orthodontics and you don't do any temporal mandibular joint work you're missing the boat man because it's mixed in there I don't care who you are you need to learn how to deal with the temporal mandibular joint and if you're an orthodontist and you think it doesn't have any effect on it, you're sadly mistaken. I'm sorry to tell you. And you need to be watching it carefully, take records on everybody and find out what the joints are doing before you start working on them. For goodness sakes, you get into a case and you find out 
they've got temperamental the joint problems, you really should treat the joint first and then do the orthodontics. But in this case, I knew what was wrong. I didn't even have to put him in a splint or anything. I knew what I could do to do it. And we got in and did it, and the pain went away. Now, that was just lucky, uh, because you really need to go in and, and position the jaw where it really ought to be, and then do the orthodontics to put the teeth where the jaw functions where it really wants to be. Uh, okay. Anyway, here we go with this. Uh, this is, this is still 1983, 12 of 83. And, uh, we're finished with the work and everything's doing good. I'm having him back just to check him. And I'm uh, going to run through these pictures. And this is 1986. He's still wearing this retainer. And we made this retainer in 1983 for him to wear, and I'm going to show it to you. I think it's 2007, something like that, and we made him another one, but he had worn this one out, but it still had the bite blade on it. And here's 86, and he's getting older, and uh, don't let him fool you now this beautiful black hair that he's got up here, his beard turning gray. He's a real jolly uh, fellow now, and here it is, 1991, and he's uh, smiling there for us with this beard, and uh, we go in and everything's still holding good. Uh, he's got some problem, I think one of these teeth is lost over a period of time and uh, he has a finally did a bridge I had to fuss at him a little bit to get him to bridge that area in. and no joint pain yet and there's the same retainer back in with the bike plate and it, it took the care now the guy had lost his hair several years back and he wore this toupee for a long time and finally he got through tired of messing with this toupee and he just went ahead and came in um, with the bald head and that's what he he has now I'll show you in 2007 this is 93 and uh, there he is he has no more joint pain now I'm going to show you what the Here's the models in 90, 1982, and here they are in 93. It's about 11 years after he came in, and that's the bite he's got there. I'm going to jump back. And now, here's the right side of the mouth. It looked good in, in 82. And let's see, no, here. And here it is in uh 93 so 11 years later it still looks good he's had those teeth crammed and here we were in 82 on the right side of the mouth and it's, it's a class 2 of the anterior and it's corrected class 1 all the way around now and the bite's open and everything and this is going there's the up there you see where those teeth were, kind of a class 2 division 2 and the, the lower teeth were just rubbing right against them and wearing them out and now they are here 11 years later and the backs of the teeth look better than they did in 1982 uh, here's the lower in 82 and there it is in, in 93 now you tell people would argue that you cannot expand the lower cuspids and you can't expand the adults and all this and, and look at the difference in this lower arch and what it uh, is after we treated it and it's still that way in 2007 and it's that way I saw him back in 12 or 14 or somewhere back in there now look at the width of that, and look at the width of this. Now, 
the teeth are not out of the bone. The bone moves with the teeth where you move a group of them. If you just take one tooth and hold this one, and you move this one out, you can move it out of the bone. Or you can have it strip off in here like that. But if you move the whole group, you can expand the thing. I don't know how far you could go with it. You can make the jaw huge if you wanted, wanted to. And, uh, this is 93, and that's the size of the jaw. And here are some uh, showing you the x-rays, the cataracts. And this is 1982. Two, and he's 43 years and four months old when we get in there and do this. So if you say you can't do it on adults, that's wrong. You can expand, and I have done this on people. I start them in their late 70s and I've gotten in their 80s. I've never done one and I started it in the 90s, but I've gotten some that went into the 90s. And you can straighten teeth as long as a person lives. I honestly have been able to do that. And I, I think that's where orthodontics has made a mistake. And, and we should really be working on treating adults in anything that is, needs to be treated. And there shouldn't be one price for orthodontics. That is about as ridiculous as you can get. It's like. Uh, fix a car for a certain number. I mean, there's all kind of differences in things. Uh, we won't get into that too much. Uh, here we are in 19, this is 1983, he's 44 and 6 months. Here it is in 91, he's 51. The bone's still good, everything's holding up. He lost this one tooth. I don't know, it must have split or something. Uh, I didn't find out exactly what was wrong with it, but he got it bridged in. This is 93. Here it is, and I guess this is 93. Or, well, no, this is two, 2004. This is uh, 2004, and the teeth are still lined up. The bites deepened a little bit, looks like they're... He may have worn a retainer down, the bank paid down some, but that's 2004, still there, no TMJ pain, he's laughing there, he got his picture, he's gotten old, like the rest of us, not as old as I am though, <laughs> and uh, here is 2004, there is 1982, you know, that's 2004, so that's 22 years later. And uh, this picture here is 2006. Uh, now, he's lost this tooth, and I really uh, got on him about getting that thing fixed. Uh, it was all the trouble we went through in his joint bone, and that started to close up. So, but he went and had it fixed. Now he's biting in the same bite plate. You see, we've added to it and opened it up a little bit more. Uh, and that's 2006. Now, now here's 2007. Uh, and he has had this tooth restored in there. So he fixed that up in this is this is a new retainer I think uh, that we we built him another retainer they wrap around retainers there's no wires crossing over the pollution I don't want that in there and there the new retainer is and the bike plane is open this by a little bit more but not too much uh, in that and that's the lower teeth, and uh, that's this bridge work that he had put in there. Uh, let's see. Now this is taking a little longer. 
and I wanted to with it, but you need to spend some time. If you're not doing temple mending your joint, uh, working correct in that on patience. Okay, here's 2007. We made this new retainer for him, and there was his old retainer that was made in 1984 after we finished him uh, in it was 82 when it started we finished it somewhere in 84 and that was the original retainer that lasted that long from uh, from 84 to 2007 uh, so I've had people wear them even longer than that and stayed with it uh, here he is and he's kind of smiling there with that and he's aged and uh, that's the end of the pictures that I've got on it. Now I hope you, uh, well you've watched this or somebody has and I appreciate it and I hope you'll uh, join our group and study these videos. I think we ought to, this is going all around over the world and people can know orthodontics but I don't do any kind of messy orthodontics I want you to do good stuff it lasts a long time so thank you for uh, watching and subscribe to our channel uh, hope to hear from you later thanks again uh, and I'm going to close out and I can get all this stuff together Thank mm -hmm. you.